On the morning of June 13, 2001, local, state, and federal hazardous materials response personnel convened outside of Chicago at the U.S. Department of Energy's Argonne National Laboratory to conduct a counterterrorism field exercise. The exercise, organized by the U.S. EPA, involved hazmat entries into simulated weapons of mass destruction, or WMD laboratories, that contain chemical, biological, and radiological agents. The purpose of this WMD field exercise is to uh, bring all the responding agencies together, local, state, and federal, who would uh, respond to a, uh, a WMD terrorism incident to uh, integrate the agencies together using the unified command system and to practice hot zone entry procedures. Two identical labs were prepared the day before to simulate as closely as possible many of the hazards found at a clandestine terrorist lab. The alleged terrorists were in the process of making the explosive mercury fulminate, pipe bombs, and secondary explosive also, devices, be a detonator that'll be placed in as well as chemical and, uh, and biological uh, warfare uh, agents. Uh, as far as the solids and things like that, uh, you've got uh, mercury fulminate crystals that have been developed from a cooking process. Mercury and nitric acid are being heated here. Uh, uh, there's also the black powder construction uh, information on the wall and the makings of uh, that uh, black powder for the pipe bombs right there. In addition to that, they want some storage. Uh, in the right hand corner is a small drum that will contain radioactive materials. We know that uh, these uh, criminals are getting into secondary devices to harm the response groups. These both have removable locations in here. We've taken the lids off and what we basically have done is built bomb components. There is a pager system in here with, electric, with a battery system. Uh, there'll be a detonator placed in here tomorrow, which is inert, but we'll have blasting caps in there. So all the components to a remote control device is here. The following morning, the four responding agencies pre-mobilized to the site, and the exercise was underway. For the purpose of this field exercise, the scenario involved the FBI serving a warrant at the lab. Local, state, and federal response agencies were pre-deployed, anticipating a potential WMD situation. In today's exercise, we had uh, the uh, Argonne uh, National Laboratory Fire Department, the DuPage County Bomb Unit. We had the National Guard 5th Civil Support Team. We had the FBI uh, Chicago Field Office involved, and also the US EPA Emergency Response Team. Controllers and evaluators for the exercise were also briefed beforehand to better critique and monitor the participants' actions and plans. From information gathered by the FBI, the initial hot zone entry would require level A personal protective equipment. The team would be made up of a hazardous materials specialist from the Argonne Fire Department and bomb technicians from the FBI and the DuPage County Sheriff's Department. After pre-entry medical monitoring and a briefing, the team suited up and entered the lab. Their uh, activities included a visual inspection of the area. They had uh, digital cameras that they used to uh, transmit pictures out to the command post. Uh, they, they were able to uh, do some uh, air monitoring. They did some radiation screening. And basically, the, the initial entry was to provide information for the second entry team. During the initial reconnaissance, the team identified two pipe bombs, as well as other potentially explosive chemicals and materials. There were also explosive devices visible, including some that uh, were in the process of being formed or manufactured. We identified a pallet containing a box which had been upset with uh, amber liquid, which we thought might be mustard gas. The team then exited the building and went directly to the fire department's mobile decontamination trailer. Then, after medical monitoring, a report was made to incident command that would better prepare the follow-up teams. The exercise utilized the unified command system, an established command structure developed specifically for multi-agency emergency response. You need to have a unified command. Establishing that and working together so we're not tripping over anybody, doing redundant work. That's probably the biggest challenge. Uh, it seemed to go pretty smooth. For a typical hazmat incident, Unified Command is usually led by the fire department. After assessing data gathered during the initial entry 
and realizing that they were dealing with a potential terrorist location, the Argonne Fire Department relinquished command to the FBI. A presidential decision directive gives the FBI lead federal response status for the crisis management portion of any terrorism incident. We advise that we have switched command to the FBI. FBI we are the crisis managers in uh, terrorism events. Uh, today's exercise was definitely a terrorist-related event. The FBI would have the lead agency responsibility in the crisis management phase of that investigation. With the information from the initial so entry team in hand, the Unified Command requested a second entry into the hot zone. The second entry team was made up of the U.S. EPA and the uh, National Guard mm -hmm. Civil Support Team. The purpose of their entry was to uh, enter the hot zone and, uh, and continue with the air monitoring and to identify chemical, biological, and radiological materials. As we went into this scenario, it really was what we refer to as an all-hazards approach. We got to look at uh, the chemical side and try to determine what they were making with the organophosphates. You know, were they really trying to make a chemical warfare agent? Or were they looking at industrial chemical compounds that they would use uh, in a terrorist event? We also had the opportunity to do some detective work on the biological side, and then of course the radiological side. So we, we got to practice all three of our areas. You know, the biggest thing that we get out of this is the building of relationships. There really is no good time uh, other than pre-incident to get together and uh, work with folks uh, and talk about capabilities and how we would do business. Uh, an incident really isn't the time to do that. So I'd say that's the biggest thing that we get out of that is the interaction with the other agencies. To remove the pipe bombs from the hot zone, the DuPage bomb squad first attempted to utilize their robot. We do have a robot. It's a useful tool as well. Uh, it does have its limitations. Uh, monocular vision, no depth of field, and it doesn't negotiate all obstacles too well, which is why we still have the bomb suit. And I donned the bomb suit to come in and actually hook the lines to the suspected improvised explosive devices. Due to the large quantities of chemicals in the lab, the bombs were rigged and pulled outside the building where they could be safely disarmed. The bomb squad also used a specially trained bomb-sniffing dog to locate the two secondary explosive devices that had been placed outside the building. The final entry into the hot zone, conducted by the FBI and the National Guard, would be for the collection of evidence to help bring the terrorists to trial. Paperwork, computer disks, photographs, chemical samples, and any other pertinent evidence was carefully collected and cataloged. Well, the FBI's main mission in an environment like this is to collect evidence so that the prosecution can, can go forward. The hazardous materials response team's purpose is to go into any environment and be able to obtain evidence. With the collection of evidence complete and all responders and equipment deconned, the exercise was concluded. The training that each agency received that day will prove invaluable in the event a real terrorist incident is thrust upon them. These events are simple. If you can communicate and you can know who you're dealing with, you can get the job done. And uh, the more that we do these exercises, the more that we interact, the more that we learn about the incident command system and plug into it, the more successful that the events will be. And that's probably the most important thing that'll come out of this exercise is uh, just getting to know uh, the, the players and, uh, and uh, developing a relationship with the other agencies. All in all, the exercise was a success. Relationships were strengthened, skills honed, evidence was collected in a safe manner, and the bombs were disarmed. And uh, the biggest success is nobody got hurt. Nobody gets hurt, we win.